All right, it's like 1.30 p.m. in Manitoba, and so that means that the sun is setting and it's getting dark. So before I lose my daylight, I'm gonna show anyone who's watching this. This is a paper bag full of minis, full of minis. My nephew handed this to me and I was like, what's this for? And he's just awesome. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. So, mini number one. What did we got here? Ah? Uh, I can't read it on the camera because it's mirrored. But this is Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Air Elemental. That's why he's clear. You see? He's like, he's air. He's just whooshing around, doing cool air elemental, air elemental stuff, which means he can go through... Uh, not walls that are solid, but like obviously if there's any holes in walls, I think you can just move right through them. And I've never encountered an air elemental or run one in any of my games. But now I've got a very good excuse to do so. And he probably, he might have picked that out for me because he knows that, uh, and maybe he doesn't know. When it comes to like the different elemental powers of things, actually I'm pretty big fan of elemental powers of various kinds um, in general. Uh, but, um, air elementals, uh, last, the last airbender, Avatar, the last airbender, air powers, I think are like the coolest, especially when they can shoot lightning. But anyway, air elemental, air powers is pretty awesome. What do we got here? I'll show you what we got. Bugbears, couple of bugbears. I should, man, yeah, if you wanted to get like a good look at the minis, I don't know how to set up my camera better to do that. <laughs> I'll try to do my best. All right? All right. Um, throwing this down. I had a little bit of energy today, and I'm like, I want to do something fun. I want to, like, I want to do something that I'm excited about. I'm going to open up these minis, and I'm going to let you be a part of it because I don't get to do things with people much these days, and it's not due to COVID. It's actually just due to my health. So, all right. <laughs> All right, we've got obviously a kind of a, a female bugbear, which that in and of itself is awesome. Now, how do I, how do I like focus on her? Meh, meh, can I get you Facebook to, to focus a little better than that? What if I fill up the camera with her? Eh, eh, eh. Okay, well, uh, it's just gonna be kind of a random showcase from a distance in some ways. But she, she, she's got this horrible yeah, expression. And she's obviously like a bugbear druid of some kind. I've never run a bugbear druid. Uh, but bugbears I usually use as like my comedic guys. Which this guy makes me think he's a bit more funny. If you can see his face, it's, it's a bit like... Yeah, yeah, oh, thug don't like... Oh, that's because everyone who's really cool has this female bugbear. That's why you have that. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. Making stuff up. Oh, oh, this is something that uh, I think I've already opened this before. Because I get rid of the loud, loud rapping. Um, this is something that my buddy Gerald gifted me. So I've seen this. I've actually seen everything in this uh, bag before. But this, my friend, is a whole bunch of cool tokens. Actually, I think I did an un unboxing video when I first got this one. But I'll show you again. Um, anyway, if you saw that one. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. All right, so what we have is a whole whack load of... Oh, yeah, well, interesting. You could run her as an orc. It'd be a female orc uh, druid chieftain, and that would work. That's actually... A good point. That's, that's not a bad idea. Um, I've got a box full of plastic rings and this is to go with minis and you stick these stickers on them with conditions of various kinds and so um, stunned for example could be stuck on here and then you stick that underneath your mini and uh, it, it reminds everybody what condition they're currently fighting which is super important because that is easy to forget in D&D, &D, especially when you're running big games with lots of people. Moving on! Moving on, we are going to the Minotaur. Because everybody needs a Minotaur. Nolzers again. These Nolzers Marvelous Miniatures are pretty darn good, if you ask me. 
Nice detail. They're usually not even very expensive, especially like they're really good at um, knowing how many you're gonna need when you buy Nolzers. Like a Minotaur, good chance your party is not gonna fight more than one Minotaur, Minotaur, Minot Minotaur, 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 Minotaur at a time. And so like, no, they just need one. But if you buy uh, a set of goblins or something, uh, then you're gonna probably get at least a few. Um, Minute doors. I have the. Uh, yeah. Can you focus? No. Nope. Um, I have the um, the Rath R Ravnica um, book, and so uh, I actually have stats for Minotaurs as a player character, and so that would be really cool. Um, Sam, uh, the colorful arcs. Wasn't sure what those were for. NGL wondered if they were false. <laughs> Eyelashes for Alanis shipped at the same time. Oh, you're talking about these arcs? These colorful arcs? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and there's this sticker. Probably the logo of the company that made them. That uh, right there, which is a really cool little logo. I should stick that on something. Yeah. Oh, man. In-person D&D. Wouldn't that be the dream? I know people are doing that nowadays because, you know, the restrictions aren't that bad. But uh, here we have a grizzly bear because, yeah, what if you want to turn into a grizzly bear as a druid? Or what if you want to throw down against a grizzly bear? Um, this could also obviously be like a polar bear or something too. But, I mean, given the, the height, bugbears are already pretty tall. And you can see how this this grizzly bear is just towering over this dude. And he's like, oh no, oh, Grumsh doesn't want to fight us. Oh. Moving on. Satyr and Dryad, oh my gosh. Who wouldn't want to get into some, uh, what do you call that? Fae, get into some Fae. Uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, I guess it's not. I think YouTube would be a better app for this, but I don't know for sure. Or just recording it first and then not going live. Let me try adjusting the curtains. And meanwhile, I will, um, I can't, I can't leave these on a table or something for you to see. Uh, be right back. <laughs> now my lighting's gonna get very orange because I like warm light, and the lights in this room are very orange. Yeah. 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 Yep. And then there's the audio of the bag getting crinkly. Come on, come on, focus. Focus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well. You can see his pan flute there. Anyway, um, there's a lot more minis to go through. I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. Okay, did that just record all that? Somebody tell me. <laughs> well, the lighting suddenly seems a lot darker now. Oh. Oh, I see. If the camera's facing the darker wall. I'm an out, I'm an out. Well, no, no, it's bleachy. Well, anyway, if you're here, you're still watching. And uh, yes, that was Alana Penner. Everyone give her a round of applause. I'm going to nod instead of applauding. These are, what the heck? I didn't even read this yet. What are these? Uh, Goliath Barbarian. Oh my gosh, this is a Goliath Barbarian. And one of them has like crazy clear sort of uh, lightning. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I mean, Goliaths are like type of a half giant or something like that. So these are pretty cool. And now somebody could play a, a Goliath character or we could run something with some Goliaths, some half giants. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, here is a couple of bearded devils. 
Uh, I don't see devils a lot in D&D games, as opposed to what the Satanic Panic would have taught me. <laughs> and when they are, do show up, they're getting their asses handed to them. Um, at least after they've done some damage to make it feel like they deserve it or something. But uh, <laughs> this bearded devil, let's just check out that beard of his. Oh, man. Yeah, well, dang it. Maybe I should stop, stop recording. But uh, I'm going to keep going. Bearded devils. Holy crap, it's a banderhob. I don't even know what a banderhob is. I haven't seen one, I haven't heard of one, but apparently it's a D&D thing and it looks like a toad monster. And I ran a uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen campaign with toad monsters that was epic. And so maybe we were just thinking, hey, let's have some more of that, because that was fun. Um, and this guy looks amazing, actually. <laughs> I don't know what he is, but I feel like he could even be a stand-in for a lot of other monstrosities. Uh, crazy, crazy monstrosities. I need a container for all this garbage. As packaging. Um, oh, this, my friend, is a Mastiff. And that is a Shadow Mastiff. I ran a Shadow Mastiff in a campaign of Fandelver. Um, that's because if you ever played Fandelver, uh, there is a dwarf named Gundren. I had him trapped inside of a mirror. Uh, that's not part of the campaign. I just thought it'd be cool if, if there was a magical mirror and you had to free somebody from it. So, uh, he was trapped in there. But in order to get him out, I think there was a Shadow Mastiff that would protect it? Or no, it was also trapped in there. Um, and so Shadow Mastiff, of course, would be black. So one could try and paint or, or stain this black somehow. Um, and then maybe then it could be more shadowy. Either that or you just put him in some really dark lighting and then he would be more shadowy. But either way, it is kind of like they're, they're hard to see. They're, they're, they're not solid. So that definitely communicates that. And this Mastiff, um, you can tell there, he's got a, uh, a saddle and saddlebags. I mean, that is freaking adorable because if you are a small creature such as a halfling or a uh, gnome, you can ride them as a mount. And so who wouldn't want to do that? Skeleton Knight. This is not Nolzer's miniatures. This is a Pathfinder. Pathfinder miniatures, which if you know anything about D&D and Pathfinder, that's just basically the very close cousin that was made at one point in the history of uh, of RPGs, and so it's basically the same kind of thing. Um, although Pathfinder enthusiasts might disagree. I don't know, I've never actually played it. But uh, I am excited about this guy, because I am hoping to run a Curse of Strahd slash uh, Barovian campaign with a lot of undead characters. And so a Skeleton Knight, that guy just looks freaking awesome. You could just be, you could be walking through the woods one day, and then suddenly this, this skeletal knight is just riding towards you, and you're like, what? And yeah, he's gonna try to kill you. This is a jackalware. A jackalware, you ask? There's such a thing as a jackalware now? Because I've heard of werewolves. I've heard of uh, even were ravens. <laughs> um, and, uh, what else would there be? Mermen? Mermaids? I haven't heard of a jackalware before. But this is a half person, half jackal. And I'm not even sure which book they would be in. I think they might be in Volo's Guide to Monsters or the Monster Manual. Woo, look at this guy. He's gonna try to chop your head off with that sword. Look at how big it is! Look at how big! Sup, Nevea. Good to see you. This is stag. It's not a monster. It's a deer. And you know what's cool about that? Everything. Because stags are cool. In fact, I wrote and ran a module. The, the closest thing I would ever try to uh, publish um, that included uh, satyrs and a stag. Um, actually, no, it was a moose. 
he was a moose. This would probably be the stand-in for him then. Um, that uh, was very integ in integral. It wasn't like it was just wandering on by as uh, decoration in the background, as an extra, but uh, he, he had a friend that rode around on him. And uh, he was, I basically, I had this little guy, a Sprite, I think, or a Brownie, I forget what he was called. Um, and he would rhyme every time he talked to the characters because it was a fey adventure and I just started doing that and I liked it very much. And um, I basically wanted to make him feel like if he told you not to do something, if he even threatened you, that he would have some way to back that up. And just stat-wise, this guy was not going to be very tough. So I gave him a, uh, an enchanted moose that he rode around on that together they would be able to at least harm the party. No matter who you are. Frogamoth! This actually is the monster that I had. Like the there was there's other frog monsters and whatnot that I had in um uh that campaign of the Horde of the Dragon Queen that I ran, but the Frogamoth was the badass monster that was the king of them all, as it were. Um, he was kept in a pit fighting area, or actually no, he was like, he was kept there as a pet, basically. Um, and he's in many pieces, so I can't really show you the mini, which is fine, I think, but the Frogamoth is a gigantic frog monster, and that's awesome. <laughs> oh, I used to go frog catching. Um, with my nieces and nephews, and oh my gosh, to do that again, I don't even care how old they are. It could be Lily at, uh, she's six now, I think, um, or, uh, or an adult. It's like, yeah, let's go frog catching uh, back at the farm. Be awesome. Okay, this guy's pretty cool. This is a gold dragon wormling and a small treasure pile, because... Who doesn't need a treasure pile to go with their dragon? Cold dra gold dragon wormling. Um, yeah, awesome sauce, I gotta say. Because um, when you start using minis and you end up having minis for all kinds of little things and tokens, just having a little pile of treasure is going to come up a lot um, in most D&D games that I run anyway, I think. Um, and this guy here, this gold dragon who can breathe fire, not all dragons can be fire, not in, not in the world of D&D. Um, he's got a uh, a little fire thing here, and I'm gonna have to, I guess I'm gonna have to one day try to at least try and look up what the uh, uh, painting technical expertise you should use to color these clear things, because obviously this is meant to be colored orangish, fiery, um, I don't know if I can get that to stay. Maybe? Well, I'll have to try another time. But obviously, sorry, but it's it would go like something like, like that. And just be like, wah, 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 wah. Hmm. This is the last one, I swear. But look at how big he is! I mean, <laughs> he's like as tall as my head. This is also from Pathfinder. And this, my friends, is an Earth Elemental Lord. And I don't think that is a particular monster in D&D. There are Earth Elementals. Um, and I'm not sure that there are Earth Elemental Lords. They have other varieties of similar creatures, I think. Um, but either way, I could get this guy to stand in as just a regular Earth Elemental just to be, you know, awesome. But uh, I, would, <laughs> I would get this guy to stand in for a lot of things, to be honest. Um, including, but not limited to, just a giant. And it's like, you got to imagine his head's on there. Because he has a rock for a head. Oh, wow, this packaging, I tell you. He's got, he's got little twisty things. They didn't want anybody walking out of the store with this one, let me tell you. But uh, that is it. That is it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna free him from his little wire cage here with my pen knife. Cut away from yourself, kids. Cut away. Wow. 
This guy is so big. So very big. I am impressed. I am impressed. I don't know how much this thing cost. I have no idea. But uh, Earth Elementals are awesome. In my first homebrew campaign, the, the second campaign I ever ran, um, Earth Elementals were a key part of it because it was kind of like a... Um, a Genesis story for my world building and in that uh, Earth Elementals were given as servants to the Dragon Lord Gallus Rinian known at the time as Gaius um, Who was the Earth Dragon Lord and so he had Earth Elementals and Basically, it was kind of like they were his servants and a lot of the the caves and caverns and tunnels anything that was underground that was formed already um Especially with like there was a whole staircase at one point and stuff like that The idea was that the earth elementals were the ones going around kind of making this stuff uh, To be more inhabitable because in my world. There's a lot of inhabited inhabitable places underground and um, And so that's what earth elementals did, but then a witch and an evil dragon uh, Eris no Aaron's the good Eris is the good one um, a a Aster who then became Ashtaroth um, was the evil dragon with the witch named Nine that came from another world, uh, just managed to turn the Earth Elementals. The Earth Elementals saw the party adventurers with a bunch of weapons, and they're like, oh, we would like to have weapons too. That would be cool. And then part of that and the, the witch's cunning um, deceived them. And as they were deceived and they fought against their, uh, their master, the Earth Elementals uh, turned into trolls and orcs as well. And so, in my world, that's where orcs come from. And trolls, I suppose. Well, actually, no, they weren't. They turned into trolls. That's what happened. They turned into trolls. The orcs were actually created by the witch um, from smushed goblins and uh, gravel. Kind of like Earth Elementals, but goblin-y. Which is why when you hit an orc, sometimes they'll spill out uh, precious gems or something like that because they've got rocks inside of them, or at least gravel. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's true. Uh, Rachel did eat the witch's face. Um, the witch nine was uh, uh, horribly disfigured after she was, uh, when she was killed um, by Spiffy, the druid who would turn into things like bears and other creatures. And so, um, oh man, this female satyr, that is, she is cool. I, she's so tiny though. At least with this guy, you can see the detail a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, you can also see the height difference. <laughs> this is normal person size. Holy crap. Um, but yeah. Uh, th this, this little female satyr is pretty awesome, but, uh, uh, let's just say she was the witch and this is Spiffy as the bear and she's like, yep, chewing that face right off. She also, I think, cut off her legs, um, burnt her and several other things and, uh, oh yeah, cut off the head as well. And what do you know it? Um, Nine, uh, was resurrected and turned into the, uh, Lady of Death who goes around without a head. She carries it with her, actually. Um, she is the headless lady. A little bit of world building factoids for you there. That is, oh, there's another thing in here. I thought that was it. Just when you think you're done, I thought there was another monster. This, my friends, is an Otiug, I think. And I'm not just making up that name. Although whoever was running this, the game at the time probably did. It's like an uh, uh, Otiug. That's how I, I'm convinced that a bunch of old, uh, oh yeah, yeah, you probably were a wolf, Rachel, and I have a ton of wolf minis that are really cool, but that's not part of this collection right now. These are all the new ones. I'm only showing the new ones right now. Audiog is a, uh, I believe it's a shit monster. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, language. It's a poop monster. Um, it is uh, found in sewers, and if it bites you, you deal with infection. Um, it's worse than a zombie. It will uh, it'll mess you up. But I don't think they're inherently evil, if I'm thinking of the right stuff. It's like, if you wanted to, I think this thing can actually psychically talk to you or something like that. Now here is a box. Um, never mind. I thought there might be minis in it. But uh, that's it.
That is it. That's all. Hey, I love this guy. This guy is so big. So big. I've got, hold on. <laughs> this is my young black dragon mini. And so young dragons are still pretty freaking big. I mean, you can see the size comparison to, uh, this is the bearded devil. This is the dog. This is the, 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 the that's the satyr. Satyrs are kind of small. Um, I'm looking for like the most average heighted character, which is probably something like the satyr. Although I think she's a little small. Yeah, she's shorter than the average person. I think. 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 This is the bearded devil, which looks to be to me about average height. Um, and so you can see, size-wise, the dragon is obviously not, like a young dragon is obviously not that small. Um, this is the uh, size comparison to a dragon wormling right here. I think I'm just dragging this on because I got so caught up in how big, uh, in the size comparison I did before. This is the dragon wormling right here. So this is like just hatched kind of thing. Like this thing's not very old yet. It's probably this age for this size for a number of years because they age very slowly if I'm not mistaken. And this is the young one. I don't have any larger dragons, I believe, uh, in my possession, but this is the size of the earth elemental lord to the dragon. Holy crap. <laughs> Rachel, language. <laughs> Oh, actually, that's technically not a swear, then. I'm just gonna try to play around with lighting. Nope. Nope. Mm. That's all for me. I'll try to do this better if I do this again. <laughs> I swear. Don't think this is the best I could do.